channel as most of you guys know it is Thursday and y'all know we'd be turning up on Thursdays with another story time but thank you guys so much for joining me for this week's story time I know that I missed last week's story time but my child needed me so if you don't know what happened definitely check out my maternity shoot vlog I let y'all know all about the uh, inner workings of uh, my doctor's appointment that knocked me the out. We're just going to jump right into the story time as you guys can tell by the title of this video. This is going to be about the time that one of my friends, Mans, was texting me super super late at night. What had happened, how it happened, what the outcome was and all of that. So if you guys would like to hear the story, please keep on watching. As usual, before we get into today's story time, today's glamour shot of the day is my cute Glamazon. Her name is Crystal. She looks so cute. I love your hat. Thank you so much for loving me and supporting me and sending me your beautiful glamour shot and just letting me put a face to the name. You guys don't understand what that does for me. So thank you guys so much for always loving me and supporting me. You guys know that I would not be here without you and I could not do this without each and every one of you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get into the story time, girl. I'm going to name this friend uh like samantha okay so samantha was a really really good friend of mine so this story takes place when i was around 22 years old 22 23 maybe and by this point in time samantha and i had been friends for about three to four years okay now, samantha was one of my very few friends that was still single she liked being single uh, by the time i got with david i was making friends with like his you know homeboys girlfriends and so like a lot of my friends had men's and like had been together for like ever right but she was one of my very few single friends she just enjoyed being single okay on top of being single she also had a child she had a little girl and she had her little girl when she was probably i want to say when she was like 18 or something like that she was a single mom and she was really really hard working and because of that she was either working or taking care of her daughter so she really didn't have a whole lot of time to date when she did decide to go out you know she and i would go out for like girls nights and stuff and she was the funnest person to go party with and like we would go to bars together and clubs together and things like that it was pretty few and far in between, but when we did go out, you guys, we would be tearing shit up, okay? Now, if you guys remember, I told you guys that I had, like, this group of, like, four best friends. It was, like, a bunch of us, right? And one of them moved, and then, like, two of the other ones kind of fell off. My current best friend was a part of that group, and unfortunately, that whole, like, it probably lasted a little over a year and like we were all best friends we would always go around each other we would chill at each other's houses unfortunately due to you know relocation and like some other drama that happened within our girl group we were no longer like friends all of us so um, my whole group of girls that I was so used to hanging out with and talking to and we would like group chat and stuff like that had like pretty much dissipated at this point. A lot of my time was freed up and I was starting to hang out more with Samantha. We started getting really, really close and she had moved from another part of town to near where David and I lived. She lived like five minutes away. And so when she moved to this new place with her daughter, I had helped her move in. I had helped her unpack. So we were becoming really, really involved in each other's lives, right? And I started worrying about my friend because, you know, you worry about them being lonely. She was so independent, so strong. She was extremely intelligent. She was a very hard worker. She sometimes would hold down two jobs at a time. She was always really busy. If she wasn't with her daughter, she was working. And I would worry about her a lot. And she never really mentioned wanting to be in a relationship she wasn't one of those people that was like god i just really want to find a man or i really want to be in a relationship it just was what it was she was like i just don't feel like i have time for the bullshit like i honestly don't care if it doesn't happen for like 15 years to be real because i just don't have time to deal with anybody else's shit right she was very guarded and very about her business but i still worried about her because like she was still she was so young and like her whole life was just work and her daughter. And like I get it because you know you have to make sacrifices and things like that for your child. And I really admired her work ethic and her ability to just stay focused, right? Samantha used to get hit on, like we could not go anywhere without her getting hit on by so many dudes. And she was so beautiful but she was very blunt she had no filter okay she was just like pretty much any other friend of mine she just was very direct 
And so, like, if she wasn't interested, she didn't play the game. She would not, like, get all flirty. She wouldn't get all, like, ah, oh, thank you. Like, I would compliment her and she'd be like, okay, thanks. You can go now. Overstate their welcome and they kept trying to talk to her. She'd be like, hey, I'm here with my friend and I'm trying to have a conversation. Please leave. Like, you, you came over here. You gave me your compliment. I graciously... Thank you for it. Please leave. So I knew that Samantha really didn't put up guy's shit. I never had to worry about her going back and forth with the guy. I never had to worry. You know how you have like some of your friends that can't make up their mind? Kind of like Heather's funky ass. She constantly was going back and forth with her dude. She just did not like playing the game. She was not good at flirting. She was like, I just don't. No. During this time, she had gotten a new job. She was getting paid more money. And um, her mom was helping out with her daughter. She had gotten a new place to live, like I said, right near me. She was just such a hard worker and things were finally looking up for her. Like, things weren't as much of a struggle as they had been the years prior. And I was so unbelievably excited for her and so happy for her, right? We had gotten really, really close during the course of like her moving and like this new promotion and stuff at work. I started texting every single day. Now this was around the time that I had two jobs. And this was around the time with my video where I fought my man's ex. Yes. So I was working at that bar and I was really, really busy all the time. She was really busy with her new job. So we weren't seeing as much of each other. Like she had moved into her new place, but like we had gone a few months without seeing each other, right? And it wasn't, we just were like doing our own thing, making our money. But every day, you guys, we were texting each other. Every day we were updating each other. Every, that not a day went by that we wouldn't check on each other. We got really, really close, right? For years, even now, David has the hobby of playing flag football. He either plays for summer or for fall. Like this year, he's been playing during the summer once a week, and he plays on Sundays, right? So he's been doing this since we first got together. That's always been a hobby of his. He always likes playing flag football. He likes staying active or whatever, right? During this time, he was playing flag football as well, and I always try try my very very best to go to all of his games I like seeing him out on the field I like supporting him in his hobby or whatever and I even have vlogs on my channel where I've gone to his flag football game I used to take Julian when Julian was like four years old <laughs> so David has always done this right the weekend comes around it's a Sunday David has a flag football game and like sometimes they're like butt crack early in the morning okay and they're like at some random school or whatever and you go out there and you sit on lawn chairs and you support your man while he plays flag football and so I had gone to David's flag football game and it was in the summer it was hot as hail and I was sitting there and I had gotten a text from Samantha like as per usual we were just like texting chit chatting shooting the shit and just catching up and you know texting each other back and forth right and then she texted me and she said I have something to tell you okay spill it what's going on I met someone knowing my friend knowing that she's always like been very much about her business she doesn't date, she doesn't like dating, she like usually doesn't have time for the bullshit, and she's just never really been one to focus on relationships. I literally read and reread that text message, like, wait, hold up, what do you mean you met someone? Like, like a new friend, or like, what do you mean, right? I've been talking to this guy, and I think I really like him, and we're gonna go on our first date tonight. Oh my god. So I started bombarding her with questions, and I'm like, well, girl, spill the tea. Like, how did you meet him? Like, how did he ask you out? Did you ask him out? Like, hello, I need all the details. What you mean? And she tells me that she met this guy on Facebook. They had mutual friends, and that they had gone to the same, like, barbecue or something and he also knew one of her cousins they exchanged numbers and then it was super low-key and she thinks that she likes him and she is gonna go on a date with him it really seemed like I was more excited about this situation than she was because I was like oh my god like what are you gonna wear like are you nervous not really she was like you know he doesn't annoy me like all the other dudes but like it's just a date Nikki like it's really not that big of a deal so even then she was still like chill like this is not this is not the love of my life. I'm just going on a dinner date with him. Okay, so like, you guys, I had always worried about her and I never wanted her to be lonely and I just wanted her to be happy. So when I heard about this mystery guy, I got super excited for her and I was like, yes, girl, like, you need to go on a date and you need to like, go get pampered. You've been by yourself for so long. Like, this is amazing. And I was so excited for her, you guys, and I was so happy, right? Okay, so I know that she's gonna go out on a date with this guy and we will call him, we'll call him Jeremy, okay? So 
She tells me that his name is Jeremy. She really doesn't tell me a whole lot about him because she's still trying to get to know him. Um, the only thing that I know is that they have mutual friends. He knows her cousin. They met on Facebook. Because she tells me that she met him on Facebook, what do I do? Ask her for his last name so I can creep on him on Facebook, right? Keep in mind all of this is happening while David's playing black football. So I find him on Facebook. He seems pretty normal. His Facebook was on private, but a few of his photos are public, so I'm going through those or whatever. I personally felt like she was too pretty for him, but like I didn't want to tell her that because like she never went on dates So like I didn't want to discourage her from going on this date, right? So I was like, yeah, girl, he's cute So she texted me the next day, updated me on her date. It went well. Like she was not annoyed She did not end up leaving the date early. You guys, she was like infamous for that shit If she was not into you, she just would like peace out. She would come up with an excuse She would say that her daughter was sick she would do that all the time so like the fact that she stayed throughout the entirety of this day this was looking really good you guys and so i was so excited like this guy was sticking literally you guys from the moment that i met her i had not seen her in a relationship so like this was crazy she had invited me over to her place to like come chill I used to bring like a bottle of wine and we would drink wine and like catch up and i would see her daughter and like just have girl time because it was so important for me to have that. I had lost the majority of like my girl group that I had gotten so used to being a part of. And so I started getting really close to her. I'd stay over there until like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning just talking, right? I'd gone over there and, you know, I, I kept poking and prying about this guy. And she was like, yeah, you know, I like him a lot. She was like, but don't get your hopes up, Nikki. Like she kept like trying to keep me calm because I was like, yeah about to have a man so like oh my god I'm so excited and she was like calm down fast forward and I would say this happened really really fast I would say within the next week I started hearing from Samantha less and less and less I started going from hearing from her a few times a day to once a day to once every other day to once a week right now, like I said at this time I was working at the bar still it's like on the weekend she worked a regular eight to five job right so she would be on the weekends she would text me really late like while I was still at the bar and she would text me at like one two o'clock in the morning and be like hey girl are you up and she would like keep me company pretty much and like text me funny shit while I was at work and because she knew that I was up right I hadn't heard from her for the majority of the week and like she had kind of gone silent and I had texted her a few times throughout the week like hey girl good morning and like our normal shit and I never got a response and I had just gotten there to start my shift so it was like eight o'clock at night I texted her like some normal shit like hey girl about to deal with these drunk ass people or something like that never got a response fast forward to the next day at this point it had been a little over a week since i had heard from her so i just honestly you guys i assumed that she was really really busy with work or that she was dating this guy and that takes a lot of time especially when you're getting to know somebody new like you just want to spend all of your time with them like they completely consume you and i get that because like I went through that phase with David. I really pushed too hard and I knew that she was gonna get a hold of me whenever she had time. It's like this little cubby area right below the bar that you can put your purse and stuff in. And I saw my phone light up in my purse while I was serving a customer. So when I had a moment, I peeked at my phone and I saw that it was from Samantha. I got really excited because I hadn't heard from her. And so I opened up the text message. She was like, hey, what are you doing? Bitch. What do you mean? Uh, living my best life, serving these drunk people. What are you doing? And like something stupid like that, like sarcastic as fuck. Like, what you mean? What am I doing? Like, <laughs> and she texted me something super weird and was like, you work way too much. And she put like this emoji. God, I, I wish I could remember for the life of me, like which one. But my point is, is that Samantha was not... An emoji person okay I know that this sounds weird but you know you know your bestie you know your friends and you will start getting to know their patterns when they text you and they almost have like their own text personality like I don't know how to explain this but I know y'all know okay this combo was a little weird to begin with I was like whatever miss workaholic you work a lot too so I was like why is she acting so brand new like this is so weird and then things took a really weird turn it was like something along the lines of 
how does your man feel about you working all night during the weekend or like how does he feel about you not being home with him or something like that now again not something my friend would say okay she knew David but she wasn't like concerned with him at all like she was very much like you do what you need to do regardless of whatever man you're with. At the time, David was working a lot too. Like he and I were grinding, okay? We were trying to get the fuck up out of that apartment that we were in. He would sometimes go and work in Wyoming to make more money. And so like sometimes he would be gone. And that's why I had a second job because like I didn't have a man to come home to. Like David and I were working all the time. So David would work over there for like a week at a time. And so there was like a chunk of time that he wasn't even home. And like she knew that. So I was like, why are you acting all brand new? Like what the hell? And since when do you ask about how David feels? Like what the hell is going on, right? So literally you guys trying to figure out what the hell is going on with my friend and still do my job. So like I keep looking at my phone and I'm so confused, right? I keep working and I went like a good half hour without looking at my phone again because like it had gotten really busy at the bar, right? And like the whole time you guys, I can't get it out of my head. I'm just like, what the hell is going on with her? Like. She's using emojis, she's asking weird questions. Like you know when your friend is being weird via text, okay? When I had a moment, I decided to take a break, got my phone, and I went to the bathroom, and I had gone into the stall, and I was like peeing or whatever, and I was checking my phone. Changed the subject a little bit, I asked about her daughter, and I was like, hey, how's my princess? Like how's she doing, how's she been? And I usually asked about her daughter all the time. I got really, really close to her daughter. Again, she texted me back within seconds. And I keep mentioning that because it wasn't that way. Like when I would text her, she was always busy. I was always busy. So like it would take her like a good 10, 15 minutes minimum for her to get back to me. But like these were coming in within seconds. Oh, she's doing fine. She was like, speaking of kids, when are you going to have kids of your own? Sorry, it's raining and thundering outside, so if you hear it, I'm so sorry. Like, it's really bad. It, it's sucky ass weather. Angels are bowling! This is where I was like, this isn't my friend. When I met Samantha, like I said, she had her daughter. And she had her daughter, like, legit right out of high school. Obviously knew that I was with David. She knew that I had a stepson. And she was always really honest with me. And as I got closer to her... She was always, she was like my older sister. She really was. And I always, I like friends in my life that will be hard on me when I need it. Like my current best friend right now, she be putting me in my place all the time, okay? I don't need friends to sugarcoat shit for me. If you're going to be my friend, I allow you to be my friend and we have that kind of relationship. Where like if I think you're doing something stupid, I'm going to tell you and I would hope that you would do the same for me, right? Okay. She always made it a point to be like, do not have kids until you are ready. Do you understand? She was always so adamant about that and she had a real last conversation with me and I was still so young at this time that Nikki, don't be dumb, okay? Do not make the same mistake I did because it's fucking hard. Don't have kids until you're ready. Like don't let him coax you into it. Like don't do this, don't do that. And she was very much against me having kids before I was ready. And she was just like, I want you to like, finish college I want you to get your career started like she was literally like my big sister so at this point in time you guys Samantha was not a fan of even the thought of me having kids because I was like three years younger than her so to her she was like uh no like you still have so much life to live don't do that so this same friend is asking me when I'm gonna have kids I was like what do you mean you want me to have kids with David and I just wanted to see what the response was going to be because I had had a conversation with her in person about this shit. And like this question right here was going to tell me for sure, matter of fact, whether or not I was actually texting my best friend or like if I was texting a complete stranger, okay? Now I'm paraphrasing here because I don't like exaggerating my story times. But in a nutshell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to remember verbatim what this text message said. And it was something along the lines of, yeah, you're so gorgeous or you're so beautiful that there's no way that you wouldn't have cute kids. And then she put the heart eye emojis. Then she put the emoji where it looks like the, the smiley face is drooling. Guys, I damn near threw my phone across the bathroom floor. I was so, like, 
scared. She doesn't talk like this. She doesn't use emojis. She doesn't ask me about kids. Like, she doesn't call me beautiful and gorgeous. Like, what the fuck? Like, we don't talk to each other that way. Everything in me was telling me this isn't her. This is not your friend on the other end of this phone. But then I was like, well, what are the odds? If somebody else getting a hold of her phone and text, why would they text me? Like, what the fuck, right? Left the bathroom and I put my phone back into my purse. I did not look at it. I did not text her back for the rest of the night. I didn't because I just had such a terrible feeling. The next day, I had called David and I told him about it. And he even knew Samantha. Like, he knew how Samantha was. I, like, sent him screenshots of the, the messages. And he was like, what the fuck? Like, that doesn't sound like her. That's super weird, babe. And I was like, I know, right? I'm going to keep this very nonchalant. I'm not going to raise any red flags. Tomorrow or something, I'm going to get a hold of her and, like, plan brunch or something. And then when I have her to myself, I will ask her, bitch, was this you? Now, fast forward the next few days, and I start texting her. Like, very nonchalant, hey, girl, what you doing? No response. And then she had texted me back like three or four days later and she's like, hey, sorry, I've been like MIA, I've been working. Things have been getting a little bit more serious with Jeremy. And you know, usually I'm super excited. Usually I'm like, yes, girl, but I just got such a sick feeling. And I was like, okay. So I started asking, I was like, hey, are you free for brunch or for lunch or whatever? I was like, I really miss you. I really want to see you. No response. Then I texted her again. We kept going back and forth, right? And like sometimes she wouldn't respond to me. And then finally I got her to be like, yeah, I'll meet you for lunch. Where do you want to meet? And we had picked a spot. And then when the time came around, she canceled. And she like, I forgot what her excuse was, but in a nutshell, she couldn't make it. I was having the hardest time, you guys, getting a hold of her and like getting her in front of me. And usually it was not this hard. I used to just like go to her house. Like it wasn't that big of a deal. So like I started asking about that. And I was like, hey, can I come chill for a little bit? And then I wouldn't get a response and like, like at all. And so I was like, well, I'm not just gonna show up at her house. Like she has a man now, like he might be over there. Three months passed, three months passed and we did not talk at all because like, I would text her nothing like I like she just was not responding anywhere like I tried to text her I tried to like DM her on Facebook her birthday month comes around and she and I used to do some big ass shit for each other's birthdays so I was like there's no way that I'm not gonna see her for her birthday like I have to see her right sure enough she hits me up about a week before her birthday and she's like hey um, I'm gonna have nothing but a girls night for my birthday and I would really like you to be there, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. She's planning a girls night without him. So like, this is my moment to see my friend, make sure she's okay. And then when the timing is right for me to ask her, hey, what the hell was going on? What is this situation right here? Like you were acting so weird. Like I just wanted to make sure everything was okay. You guys, something just wasn't sitting well with me. She was like, we're going to meet up at my cousin's house. We're going to pregame there. And because we've been drinking, we are going to ride together. And Jeremy is going to drop all of us off. One of them, either her cousin or him, had like an STV. So it's going to be like five or six of us girls, right? So she was like, he's going to drive us, drop us off at the bar. And then he'll be the one to pick us up and then drive everyone home. That was the plan. And I had been over to her cousin's house before. I get all cute, get all dressed up, and I have David drop me off at her cousin's house. Go into her cousin's house. All of her other friends are there, and like they're all drinking or whatever. So her cousin makes me a drink. Immediately recognized Jeremy from his photos. Bantha wasn't in the room yet. I think she was still getting ready. So I didn't say anything to him, and I was waiting for her to come out so that she could do the formal introduction, right? So I just like kind of, you know, walk past him. Finally, Samantha is done getting ready. She comes to the dining room from the back of the house, wherever she was, and she's like, Nikki, and the, you know, she's like, I didn't know you were here, and you know, she gives me a hug. We took a shot together. I gave her her gift. We had like little cupcakes or whatever, and we're like talking and laughing, and finally she's like, hey, she's like, I want to introduce you to him, and I was like, Okay, she was like, babe, come here, babe. And she like looked over and like I said, the dining room was right by the living room. And she was like, babe, he would not answer her. Like he was watching TV, right? And he would not look up at her. And I was like, you guys, I hate that so much. Like that is so fucking rude. And so I'm like looking at her sideways, like what the hell is going on? Like, 
why are you not going off like you usually do like when a dude tries to treat you like that the fuck i'm like sitting there looking at him like i know you hear my friend like i know that you hear her calling you she ended up saying babe like three or four times like jeremy babe 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 and like on the fourth time he goes hold on so ugly so ugly and i remember this like it was yesterday and he looked at her and he goes wait for a second you see me watching tv i cannot stand it when a man speaks to a woman like that i can't stand it that is so ugly that is so rude what the fuck you mean like you don't need to it's her birthday none of that what what sorry he gets really into his show you don't need to be apologizing for his rude ass behavior so i was like it's fine i start talking shit and i grabbed her i was like um that's fine i said you don't need to be putting up with anybody's attitude on your birthday anyway and like i grabbed her and went back to the dining room and he just kind of looked up at me and i was like you I'm here fucking talking to my friend like that on her birthday no less like if she puts up with that on a daily that's her but her birthday are you kidding finally when he is good and ready right before we leave he comes over and he like starts hugging up on her hey, i was trying to introduce you to one of my best friends earlier and he was like sorry like i was like really into it or whatever this is my friend nikki nikki this is jeremy usually i'm really cordial and like you know i'd be shaking people's hands and with him i just had a really ugly feeling and i just looked at him and i was like hey he was like well it's nice to meet you i didn't even like look directly at him i was like yeah you too and like i grabbed my drink and i was like mm -mm. like i no i don't like you so we finally get to the bar we all get out we go inside and we start having so much fun. And I don't want to ruin my friend's birthday. She also had some more of like her cousins and stuff that were gonna meet us at the bar. So it turned out to be like a dozen of us <laughs> there partying together, right? We take a bunch of pictures, we're like taking shots. This bar turned into a club after a certain time. It just so happened that one of my friends was the DJ, so I knew him. I got to go up on the DJ booth and I brought her with me and we're like dancing up there and it's like elevated or whatever. And he was playing all the songs that we were requesting and like it, we were having so much fun, right? To avoid a hangover, I hate the feeling of a hangover. I cut myself off. I didn't have any more drinks after like 12.30 and I knew that Jeremy was gonna come pick us up at like 1 30 in the morning. So I didn't want to continue drinking because then I was gonna get sick, right? So that was pretty much that was my rule and that was also Samantha's rule. I actually learned that from her. Stop drinking and then you just drink a bunch of water so that way you're not like shit faced, you're not falling all over the place, you're not throwing up and you're not super dehydrated the next morning and you have a terrible hangover. She had one more shot and then that was it. Last hour we were just like dancing or whatever and like talking with our friends and everything was fine. But there was always someone around her and I just could not seem to find a moment to talk to her about this. She was either too drunk or there was always someone around but I was still, this was not sitting well with me and I still like really really needed to talk to my friend. Before I knew it she's telling me that Jeremy's outside and so it just so happened that all of the girls that had rode with us there had gotten their own rides home whether it be from their boyfriends or their sisters or whatever so it turned out that I was the only person that was going to get dropped off by Jeremy and that was getting into the SUV with Samantha. She takes her place and gets into the passenger seat I get into the back seat and you guys the minute that I get into the SUV I start low key panicking because I immediately start remembering how hard it was for me to even get a hold of her before her birthday like I could not get her to meet me for brunch she was not letting me come over to the house she wasn't texting me back like she was pretty much disappearing and like I don't know at this point with the way things are going I don't know when I'm gonna see my friend again. She told him, she was like, just head home like you normally would and I'll tell you where to turn. She lives right by us. Just to refresh my memory to be like, am I tripping? Am I, you know, making shit up? Am I exaggerating? Should I feel this way? I opened up my phone and I went through my text messages and I went back to that night and that conversation. Going through it and I'm just like sitting there and I was like, I could not get over it. Like I could not stop thinking how weird that was and she was like looking back and she's like nikki what's wrong i was like nothing and i like had my phone and i was like i just want to show you something and i was like trying to stay as nonchalant as possible because he's right there like he's driving right i just like leaned forward and you know that middle console between the driver's seat and the passenger seat and i like placed my elbow there and i just like showed her my phone and really low I whispered to her and I said, was this you? She was like, what? And so she just grabbed my phone and she was like, 
what do you mean? And so she like looked at it and she sat there. Jeremy starts freaking out. And he like is driving and she's sitting there and she's just staring at it. And she goes, who is this? And I just like panicked and I was like, oh my God, like she doesn't recognize these text messages because she's not the one that texted them. I thought they were from you. I was like, it's coming from your number. He's on the highway, okay? And he just starts freaking out and he's driving. What is that, Samantha? He was like, what are you looking at? What is she showing you? He just kind of stayed quiet and he goes, Samantha, what is that? He started freaking out and I'm sitting there and the minute that he started acting like that, I got mad. I started getting really mad like, no, you're not gonna start asking questions she is trying to tell me the truth. Ah, and I, I like cut him off and I was like, Samantha, was that you? Did you send those to me? And she just looked at him and she looked back at me and she goes, Nikki, this wasn't me. Before I could even say anything, she starts going at him. She still had my phone and she goes, what the fuck is this? What is this? And she starts crying immediately. She like cried when she was angry. You were texting my best friend off of my phone while I was fucking sleeping? Are you kidding me? She's like, you're the only person that's been at my house. You know the code to my phone. What the fuck, Jeremy? And so she's like going off, right? And so like they start fighting. He was like, what are you talking about? He was like, I didn't do anything like that. She was like, you're over here texting my friend. Why are you texting my friend? He grabbed her clutch. She got her phone out. And so she like looked at the date and she got her phone out and she went back through her text messages and she was like, these texts aren't even here on my phone. She was like, so not only did you text my friend, you deleted shit off of my phone so I wouldn't know. Everything in me wanted it to not be true. Everything in me wanted her to be like, yeah, girl, I was just having an off night and like I thought I was being funny. Like, but I needed answers because something just was not sitting with me well. And like, this was like the worst way that it could have possibly turned out. And I wanted it so badly to have been her. They are going at each other and he's like emphatically denying it like I don't know what you're talking about like and he like keeps looking at me through the rearview mirror he was looking at me like he wanted to kill me and so he finally gets to my apartments he like jerks the car to a stop she was like just get inside and so she was like telling me to like go and I was like girl okay I was like okay so I hugged her and I was like everything's gonna be okay and she just like hugged me with one arm and she was like no it's not but that's fine what are the chances like why would somebody do that why would he get on her phone randomly he didn't even know me he hadn't even met me yet like why would he just like get on her phone in the middle of the night and start texting me I don't know like that just seems super weird and very unlikely and so but it still bothered me to the point where I was like girl what the hell happened like what was this situation right here I get out of the car I can still hear them fighting I can still hear her yelling gone inside my apartment and I just literally, I went inside and I cried. I wanted this whole relationship to work out and I was so happy for her. But I'm still not going to keep my friend in the dark and I'm still not going to like keep secrets from her and I'm still not going to allow her to be made to look stupid. If I feel like something's off, I'm going to talk to my friend about it and I just genuinely, honestly, I just didn't feel like I was going to be right. Like what's the likelihood? But then I was and I just felt terrible about it. Like. I should have just kept that a secret and I should have just overlooked it but then again like I'm just not that kind of friend if something seems weird to me I'm gonna tell you and so I walk in crying David comes to me he's like baby are you okay and I told him what happened and I was like babe like I was right and I don't want to be and like I don't know what to do and blah 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 I had texted her that night and then I woke up the next morning the first thing that was on my mind was her and I texted her that morning didn't get a text message back I texted her every day for the rest of the week and I was not getting a response from her. I don't know if she was giving me the silent treatment or what, but I was worried about her because like they were they drove off fighting. So like I wanted to make sure that she was okay. So I was like texting her every day. Two weeks passed and I had texted her every day for like a week. And finally, I just conceded the point. I was like running errands and it was just me. My phone rings and it's Samantha. So I answered the phone. She was like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, I'm just running errands. And I didn't even want to have small talk. I was like, hey, how are you? Like, what happened? Are you okay? She was like, I just wanted to talk to you about the text messages. And I was like, okay, you know? So I literally, you guys, I pulled over. Like I was driving when she called me and I like pulled over because this was so important to me. I just wanted to let you know that I was wrong 
And I was like, what? And she was like, I was the one that sent you those text messages. Her whole tune changed. She like fed me this bullshit story, okay? In a nutshell, this is what it was. I was sleeping and I had woken up and I wasn't fully awake. So I was like texting super weird, but that was me. And then for some reason, I deleted them and I didn't remember it and I had gone back to sleep. And so that's why it didn't seem like me. Hmm. Really? You expect me to believe that you went off on your man. You didn't recognize any of these text messages because you had woken up in the middle of the night to text me more than once and you were so half asleep that you just started using strange emojis and shit and talking to me about shit that you usually don't and being weird as fuck and then your half asleep ass decided that you were going to delete that entire conversation. I was offended. I was literally offended by the amount of insult to my intelligence that this girl was trying to get away with. Really, Samantha? That's the story you're going with? And she just kind of got quiet. I could tell that th it was a bunch of bullshit. But like, I didn't push it. Fine. 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 You want to sit up here and save face for your man? That's fine. Like, I'm not going to push it. We'll pretend like this didn't happen. We'll pretend like that's the truth, even though you and I both know it's not. Because I care about you, I love you, and you're my friend. Okay, fine. Alright, you want to go with this story? This stupid fucking story about you being half asleep and like, I don't know, sleep texting and sleep deleting. Okay, fine. And there was silence. And then, she said, Nikki, I'm going to need you to come over to my house like sometime this week. I was like, yeah, of course. Like, I was like, when do you want me to come over? And she was like, can you come over tonight? So I'm like all down for it. I'm like, yeah, I can bring some wine over or whatever. And she goes, no, there's no need. And I was like, okay. And she goes, Jeremy's going to be here. And I was like, oh. And like immediately I'm trying to go over there when he's there. What do you mean? Why? And she goes, because I need you to in person, face to face, apologize to him apologize for what exactly and she was like for accusing him of doing that she was like you know it really did cause a big fight between he and i i was done it's one thing for you to sit up there and like want to lie to me and to yourself most likely about the goings on in your relationship your business i did what i was supposed to do as your friend and told you what the hell was going on like i was supposed to what you do with that your business but you are not about to have me bow down to this man right here and apologize for some shit that I didn't create, okay? I'm not doing it. Very simple. I showed you the text messages and I asked you, was this you? You told me no. You said you didn't recognize it. There's no trace of these messages on your phone. You're the one who started fighting with him. I said, so if it was you the whole time and you were fighting with your man about it, that sounds like a you problem. I said, but you're not about to have me come and apologize to your man, Samantha, when you and I both know that you're fucking lying. I lost my shit. I was like, how the hell can you sacrifice me like this right now? I was like, I cannot believe that you are asking me to come over and face your man and basically like bow down like, like I have something to apologize for. I was like, I don't have shit to apologize for. I said, you and I both know this is a bunch of bullshit. I was like, and it's one thing for you to like, want to lie about this entire situation and you know I was like I'll support you in that I was like but I'm not about to be sacrificed and be made to apologize to your man over something that I did not create I did not do all I did was receive some sketch ass text messages and you for real want me to come over and apologize to your man are you serious right now I was like your man that you've been together for like a whole two three months I cannot believe that you seriously tried this with me. Like, I can't, I can't believe that it's not enough for you to treat me like I'm stupid and for you to insult my intelligence with that bullshit story of yours, but to top it off and the cherry on top of all of it, have me come to your house to face him in person. It's very important that it's in person. 
and to apologize to him to make y'all feel better about y'all's dysfunctional ass shit, that matters to you more than your friendship with me. I was so heartbroken. And she was like, never mind. She was like, Nikki, no, that's not how it is. She's like, never mind. You don't need to come over. You don't need to apologize to him. And I said, no, don't try to clean it up now, Samantha. Don't do that. Stand by whatever it is that you fucking believe. Whatever it is that you wanted, that's what you just asked of me. Had, had I been a pushover friend, you would have had me do that for no reason. Like, you literally would have because this little two, three month relationship is worth more than our, our three, four year long friendship. It's that easy for you to sacrifice me like that we like talked for a little bit on facebook after that but i just had a really hard time getting past that and our friendship dwindled after that and we ended up not ever speaking again i was not willing to play along with her lie with her bullshit with their dysfunction that's how i lost my friendship with one of my friends because her man was texting me some weird ass shit really late at night off of her phone and we both knew it and she admitted it to me and then she recanted her story because they made up or whatever in the two weeks that she was ignoring me and I wasn't willing to go over there and apologize to him. <laughs> you know this whole situation still upsets me to this day because I just felt like it was stupid and I just, I, anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this story. If you did, please don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up to let me know. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to hit that huge subscribe button down below while you're at it. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Before I go, I have some big news. I'm working on my second channel, which is where I will be doing more vlogs, showing more of my family, my pregnancy story, like my mommy videos. Definitely keep your eye out for that. Um, I am currently in the process of creating it. Um, and I will let you guys know as soon as it's up and running for you guys to head over there and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for coming back and joining me for story time this week. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Peace out.